In today's show, we look ahead to week 10. Yes, week 10 in the NBA. We'll talk about the schedule. We'll talk about what we do with streaming. We'll talk about guys to start and sit. And we'll also hear from Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball and Substack Josh Lloyd 48 Substack.com. Today's episode is brought to you by PricePix. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's pricepix.com. The promo code is locked on. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It's week 10, it's NBA Christmas. It's actual just Christmas in general. But we have got a weird schedule because of the Christmas Day games. The annoyance of the NBA's absolute. I don't know. I don't know what the word is. Like stupidity, um, insistence on ga- days with no games and days where everyone plays. Like what What one person, maybe, maybe it is just the networks. Hey, we only want two games on. But what one person goes, man, I wish I could have a day where every team plays and a day where nobody plays. Like, anyway. I, it's got to be network-based, surely, because it couldn't be any rational person who wants to watch basketball and absorb what's going on in the league because you can't do it when 14 games are on. Well, I try to do it. It's not that easy. Anyway, we're going to talk about week 10. We're going to talk about what that means for fantasy. Warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, week 10 starts off pretty normal. We've got nine games on a Monday. We've got five games on a Tuesday. We've got 11 games on a Wednesday. Pretty stock standard stuff there. Two games on a Thursday. Jesus, I hate a two-game Thursday. Um, and then 14 teams play on Friday. Yes, I know it's because nobody plays on Christmas Eve, which is Saturday. There are zero games on. But you know what you could do? You could, you could make seven, seven games on Thursday and nine games on Friday. Really easy to do. Really. And don't tell me it's like, oh, there's too much time off for teams. Warriors don't play uh, like Thursday or Friday or Saturday. So some teams can do it. I'm sure others can as well. I know it's a broadcast thing. I know. I know. It's stupid. The only people who like it are the broadcast people. Not one other person likes it. Surely not. Enough of that. So we've got zero games on Saturday and five on Sunday. That is Christmas Day. So of course, we always have to be aware that Christmas Day games are on. Things start early. Um, yeah, so make sure the lineups are set early. But as you can tell, by having a two-game Thursday and a zero-game Saturday... And even just a five game, so if only five games across two days to end the week, it is a lower volume week full of games. Like there is just not as many games to be played this week. Let's talk about them. Only six teams play four games. Sometimes you'll get 20 teams that play four games during the week. We've got six. So yes, there are, there are four teams that play two games. But the impact of a two game week this week is nowhere near as bad as when everyone plays four games. When everyone's playing three games and you play two, yes, it's not ideal. But it doesn't hurt as much as playing a two-game week when there are 18 teams playing four games. We have a look at those six teams that play four games because they have the real advantage here. It's the Mavericks, the Suns, the Sixers, the Knicks, the Lakers, and the Milwaukee Bucks. They all have four games this week. They're the only six teams that have four games this week. So that is giving these guys an advantage. But as always, as always, the schedule and when those games are played becomes extra important. It always is. For example, the di- there is a difference between a Bucks two-game schedule, or sorry, a four-game schedule, because two of those games are on an 11-game Friday and a 14-game, 11-game Wednesday, sorry, and a 14-game Friday versus a Suns four-game week because they play Monday, Tuesday. Great value there. Then they play Friday, then they play Sunday. So they've got three useful games versus two. 20 teams play three games. That is two-thirds of the league. And then the Heat, the Clippers, the Nets, and the Pacers play only two games for the week. 
that is not great. And only there's only one quality game amongst all four of those two game teams, and it's the Miami Heat. They play on Tuesday. Every one else, the Clippers both games, Wednesday, Friday, the Nets, Wednesday, Friday, the Pacers, Wednesday, Friday, and then the Heat play on Friday as well. So these two game teams, any sort of fringy players, shout out um, Terrence Mann or Nick Batum or um, Reggie Jackson or John Wall or Royce O'Neal or Joe Harris or Seth Curry or TJ Warren or Jalen Smith or Andrew Neesmith or Andrew Nampard. You're not going to play him this week. So holding on to them makes no sense at all. It is a harder week to get value through streaming. But if you're on these teams, they do. you will not use these guys most likely. Maybe you sneak them in on the 11 game Wednesday, but you're just not going to use them. And that, when you've got a fringe player like Andrew Nampard, who we love what he did, but he's a clear drop. You're not going to use him this week. His production's back end anyway. See you later. I would even, like, you'd say the same for the Heat guys, but they do play on the Tuesday. But after that, Kayla Martin, Max Struess, see you later, like, really easily. Um, yeah, all of those random Clippers guys. I don't know about Zubats, but he's trending that way. I probably would hold him. But Marcus Morris, John Wall, Reggie Jackson, Nick Batum, Terrence Mant, see you later. Even if Paul George remains out, he's dealing with this knee thing. I'm not holding on to Terrence Mann to have him play two games on high-volume days next week. I just don't think that's going to be worth it, in my humble opinion. Let's look at how we stream. We've got four stream days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. No Wednesday, no Friday, no Saturday. So four streaming days for the week. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise here, I don't think. There are two teams that play three quality games, the Jazz and the Suns. The Jazz, interestingly, play three games. All three of their games are on the low-volume days. And they have the added bonus that their last game for the week, Utah, is on Thursday. So they don't play Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Not that there's a huge amount of stream guys on the Jazz. Like, is Vanderbilt a stream guy? Like, a Linux not. Markinen's not. Kessler's not. Um, Conley's not. Clarkson's not. Like, Beasley isn't either, but maybe he is. But, you know, Sexton's still injured. I don't even know if there's really many stream guys. But if, for some reason... Your league has Vanderbilt or Kessler or Olenek or Beasley on the waiver wire, or even, to be honest, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. This is a great time to use these players. I've just talked about this already. The Clippers, the Nets, and the Pacers have zero quality games. So anyone you're on the borderline, anyone who's sitting on your bench on those teams, most likely, see you later. Because you're, just, you're not going to play them. You're wasting roster spots for fringe players. And you get more value out of uh, getting other players in in those spots in this situation. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is daily fantasy, but it's daily fantasy made easy. There's no salary caps. You're not up against thousands of people. It's you versus player projections. You might look at Andrew Nempard over under eight and a half points. You go, I'll take under. It's not looking good in terms of usage for him at the moment. But you might say Miles Turner over under two and a half blocks. Well, his box have actually been down. Maybe you take an under on that. You get two to six of those, put them into a lineup, and you can win up to 25 times your entry fee. You can do that in under 60 seconds. Payouts are safe and fast, and you can do it in over 30 US states and in Canada. You can do it for the NBA, but you can also do it for the NFL, for college bowl season, for college basketball, for MMA, for boxing, for PGA, cricket, European basketball, even disc golf. All that is available at PricePix. So download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, price picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks gives you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Today's episode is also brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasional budget across the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classical luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Now test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. 
Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boarding rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Let's look at the back-to-backs for the week. Um, Sunday, Monday, we've got a few teams here carrying over. Hornets, Wolves, Raptors, Magic, Lakers have the uh, the carryover back-to-back ending week nine, starting week 10. So we've got five teams with that back-to-back to start off. There are only two teams that start the week with a back-to-back. And that is the Phoenix Suns and the Utah Jazz. Now, I guess there is a risk of, say, a Chris Paul rest due to his heel. There is a risk maybe of Mike Conley resting, which would really open up that value for Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And even if Colin Sexton's back, you'd have to assume coming back from a hamstring injury, he's going to sit one of those two games. But they're the only two teams with that back-to-back to start things off. Tuesday, Wednesday, there are a couple of teams that have the back-to-back, but remember... Wednesday's an 11-game day. So is it even worth streaming one of these four teams? Because will you play that player on th- on, on Wednesday? The Knicks. So you could look at Emmanuel quickly and say, all right, that's good. Good back-to-back. You know, look at Quentin Grimes. Maybe maybe I would play Quentin Grimes on the Wednesday, to be honest, the way he's playing at the moment. Like you got Hartenstein. Do I bother with him? Would you play him on the Wednesday? The teams, by the way. Knicks, Bulls, Warriors, Pistons. Um, yeah, a, a Grimes... Situation, yeah, look, he's worth an ad. He's probably a start. For the Pistons, Jalen Duran is worth starting. Like, I, I'd grab him. Not even if he's back-to-back, he's a grab. Um, but then you've got, like, that Alec Burke. So you've got an Alex Caruso, who probably is worth it for the Bulls as well, or a Patrick Williams. But you've got to look to see whether you actually use them on the Wednesday. The important one there is the Warriors. Because we know Steph's out, and that means that Clay is going to miss one of these games. And we don't even know if Andrew Wiggins is going to be back. And Draymond Green's dealing with something. So they might have everyone out on one of those days. Meaning, Kaminga, value up. Pool's value's already up. The big ragu, through the roof. Dante DiVincenzo. Um, I was going to say Kevon Looney, but who knows? He might play 10 minutes. He might play 30 minutes. He's all over the shop. You might get even some James Wiseman minutes there. There could be opportunities open up for that Warriors back-to-back. So pay attention to that one. Tuesday, Thursday, so the pseudo back-to-back. There's two teams that have it. The Jazz and the Wizards. So a little bit of value in grabbing a Wizards player. We need to check the status of like a Bradley Beal. But Monte Morris, Will Barton, Denny Avdia, Corey Kispert, maybe Jordan Goodwin. You get a little bit of value from streaming those guys there. And then it's really barren. Wednesday, Thursday, there's no back-to-back. Thursday, Friday, well, it doesn't matter because Friday has 14 games on. So even if you stream someone for the Thursday, Friday, back-to-back, and there are teams that have it, but I just haven't included it here because literally everybody plays on Friday. It's the Pelicans, Spurs, and Wizards who have the Thursday, Friday back-to-back. Look, you're just not going to use that guy on Friday. Saturday, nobody plays. It's it's obviously day off for Christmas. And nobody has the Thursday-Sunday combination. So you can't even say, well, I'll grab someone to play the two-game Thursday and then get that extra game from them on Christmas because nobody has that combination of games. And then from Christmas, heading on to Boxing Day, the Monday of Week 11... No one has that back-to-back either. So there's just nothing going on at the end of the week. Really hard to maximize games played towards the end of um, week 10. Let's look at a streaming plan. Well, it's really the Suns and the Jazz who have the most quality games. So you can start with them. They have the Monday, Tuesday back-to-back. And then you can individually stream. Or the Jazz, even though they only play three games, they start off the week great. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Bang, bang, bang. But it is hard to find that guy. So look who's available. Alinek, grab. Vanderbilt, grab. Kessler, grab. Beasley, grab. Someone dropped Conley, grab. It's perfect to grab any Jazz player who plays a solid role. As I said, Alexander Walker might even have a significant role um, for at least one or two of these games. And then it's just the individual days. Like you're not going to get anyone on Friday, most likely, to play outside of injuries that creep up and opportunities that arise. Saturday, no one plays, and then it's just streaming in for Christmas. So always trying to keep at least one waiver ad for opportunity options. Injuries happen. Hey, Clint Capella went down. Let me grab a Congo. Hey, Anthony Davis got hurt. Let's grab Tom Bryant. That might not make any sense for the schedule, but it could make sense really big time for the next two weeks. I don't know what's happening with Davis. It doesn't appear serious, but we'll find out. But that's the sort of move that you make. You know, Steph goes down, let's grab DiVincenzo and see what happens. Worked out pretty well after one game so far. We'll see where it goes from there. But this week is perfect because you are able to hold on to those waiver ads and 
you know, still ma maximize streaming as much as you can because of the way the schedule set up with just so many limited options towards the end of that week. Let's look at how it front loads. I just talked about that. The Jazz play three in four nights to begin the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, only team that has that. The Warriors, they only play one game between Thursday and Sunday, and that's on Sunday. So they play Wednesday, and then there's, they've got the Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back -back Golden State. We know Clay's going to sit. And then, so if you did grab a John Kaminga, you're going to have to sit Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Obviously, no one plays, but three days with no action from that waiver spot. So a guy like DiVincenzo is a hold in that scenario, but just be really cautious if you are looking at Warriors guys and fringy Warriors players like a Kaminga that there's a rough end to the week. And as I said, the end of the week is bad. It's really not good at all for fantasy. There are 18 teams that play one game between Thursday and Sunday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 18 teams play one game. And the teams that play more play two. There is nothing going on at the end of the week. Nothing. Oh, there are four days there. And three of those days combined have seven games. The other one has 14 but three days have seven. It's a really barren end to the week. Today's episode is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. We know ExpressVPN it protects your privacy and security online, but it does other things. It can give you other shows, movies to watch in other countries. Maybe you've run through Netflix and it's done. It's all finished. It's, it sits there and goes, give me a break. You've watched everything. How's that possible? And you go, ha ah, Netflix. Jokes on you because I'm about to log into Australian Netflix to watch Rick and Morty. Well, you can do that with ExpressVPN. It's not just Netflix, though. You can do it with Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason that you should choose ExpressVPN to watch shows is because it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or any lag, and you can stream in HD, no problem. ExpressVPN also works on all your devices, phones, media, consoles, smart TVs, and more. I wonder if I can watch it on a smart fridge. Probably. So you can go watch what you want on the big screen or on the go. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new movies and shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on. Expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. Let's look at some potential injury returns this week. We don't know that they're going to return, but based on timelines, we think there's a chance. Joe Ingles is probably going to return this week. He, he is not a 12-team ad. There's a chance that Maga Porter returns. So that will deflate the value of the big stiffy, the five-minute man, Bones Highland, and Bruce Brown. There's a chance DeAndre will generate and should return. Colin Sexton's also likely to return. Whether he plays those three games in four nights, I'd be highly doubting of that. I think he's probably only going to play two. Brandon Ingram could return. I don't know what the hell my spelling is there. Jesus Christ, I didn't notice that. Brandon Ingram, there's a chance he returns towards the end of the week. Um, maybe Wendell Carter, if the magic ever tells anything, he could also return in 2026. We just don't know because they are absolutely shitful at their job. OG Ananobi could also return this week. But what about Scarves? OG. Balenciaga stop OG. Uh, you better stop OG. And then in Atlanta, you might get DeJounte Murray or John Collins back or both back during the week. So streaming opportunities for a Chris Boucher or even a Gary Trent or uh, AJ Griffin or... Um, uh, Jalen Johnson, the stream options might end for a lot of these different guys. Yeah, Jock Landau, Jock Landale, <laughs> um, Brown and Highland, all those guys. It might add. It might end, sorry. We look at the weekly leagues. Are you in a league where you set a lineup once a week and that's it? This is for you. If you don't, kindly bugger off. Well, don't bugger off. Watch it. But when I say sit a player, it doesn't apply to you. Yeah? We got that? We're straight? All right, weekly league ads. Quentin Grimes, I think he's pushing towards an ad anyway. Um, there are going to be nights that a 15% usage guy doesn't shoot 60% from the field and then the value just disappears, right? Because he doesn't do much else. But the shooting has been unbelievable. The minutes have been great and I love that. So I like it. And he's got four weeks, four games this week. Tory Craig, Cam Johnson's still out. Craig doesn't excite us, but he plays four games. There's not many players that do. So let's go. Emmanuel Quickly, uh, Jesus Christ, like I hate recommending Emmanuel Quickly because he'll play 27 minutes and he'll score two points, then he'll score 30 points, then he'll score zero points, and he'll play 19 minutes because it's all over the shop with him and with his coach. But it's four games, six teams play four games. He's one of them. Let's see. Grayson Allen's got four games. 
Austin Reeves. He's really good, I think. Well, that's not, let's, let's rephrase that. He is just a very, very solid role player who's actually increasing his fantasy value. And if Davis misses time, I think it really does help Reeves. So with four games this week, again, that's a big bonus. Reeves is worth it. Isaiah Hardenstein, yeah, look, Jesus Christ, I have no confidence in that either, but it's four games. So that gives you a boost. When four teams play two games, playing four games gives you a massive boost. And then, as much as I hate to say it, you could look at Dennis Schroeder. Four game boost, good. Potential Davis missed, good. Is Schroeder good? No. But there are opportunities here with other players out. If we look at who we're going to sit in a weekly league, well, we've got to focus our attention on the two game teams first. I think the Heat guys need to be sat apart from Adebayo and Butler. Remember, a two game week this week is not as bad as a regular week. You could squeeze Tyler Hero in there. I think he's more borderline than Bam and Jimmy, though. I would start Jet, Bam and Jimmy, no problem. Hero becomes borderline. For the Clippers, I would start nobody except Paul George. And even then, I don't even know if he's going to be healthy. And when you play two games only, if you're sort of questionable at the moment, there's a risk you play one and there's no value in it. So I say except George. That's only if we know 100% that he's clear and ready to go. For the Nets, sit everyone apart from Irving and Durant. No Simmons, no Claxton, no O'Neal. And for the Pacers, I'll sit everybody apart from Halliburton and Turner. No Heald, no um, whoever else is in that mix. I can't even think. Uh, nee Smith or Jalen Smith, of course. So he, he, Halliburton and Turner, we keep going with. I think Colin Sexton's not worth starting. I think Clay Thompson's only going to have two games. That's not worth it. Jaden Ivey, absolutely not worth it. And Grant Williams, also not worth it. For points leagues, these guys are all available in uh, over 40% of leagues. Emmanuel quickly we talked about. And Yekura Kongwu, he's still available in lots of spots and there are, well, Capella's out. So look, I think he's a really good ad for this week. Quentin Grimes, we just talked about. Tim Hardaway, um, four games. And, you know, he's been probably good in more games than bad over the last two weeks. There's still going to be stinkers in there, but they play four games. That's a benefit. Tory Craig, Markel Fultz, consist, getting a bit more consistency in. Still not there, but getting a bit more in. Dennis Schroeder, we just spoke about. And... Jalen Duran. In terms of guys to sit, it's very similar. The Heat, everyone except Adebayo and Butler. Again, the borderline of hero. Clippers, everyone except for George. Again, we don't know that situation. The Nets, everyone except Irving and Durant. And the Pacers, I wouldn't even start Turner this week for points leagues. I would start Halliburton. And then there's Clay Thompson, Brandon Clark, Jalen McDaniels, and John Kaminga with only three games on. The potential of maybe one game with elevated minutes, I don't think... He, and he's rostering like 50% of leagues. I don't think he's worth a start in a weekly points league. I wouldn't start him in a weekly categories league either. So I guess the main takeaway from this today is look at the Jazz. And look at someone like Walker Kessler, right? He must be rostered everywhere. But if you're on the fence, I don't know why you would be. But if you are on the fence, this is the perfect week to add him. Because you are going to get three quality games in the first four nights. And then I think you'll be convinced, oh yeah, I, I do need to roster this guy. Right? That is the takeaway. Work the schedule. Be aware that a, a light end of the week isn't a death knell because everyone's got one. And good luck and Merry Christmas. Guys, we are done here. No, we're not. Because I've got to tell you something. I've got to tell you that you can find this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Odyssey. And if you watch it on YouTube, download the audio. And if you're listening to it, go watch the video. Helps me a lot. Drop comments on YouTube, all that sort of stuff. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.